Alrighty, I call to order the regular meeting of the Board of Public Works this Tuesday, October 26, 2021. First up, we have messages from the board. Any messages tonight? Just want to wish everyone a happy Halloween. And if you're out trick or treating, be safe. And again, thanks to everyone for all you do to keep our city beautiful. Thank you, Beth. Okay, next up we have petitions and remonstrances. Uh, under, under this item, we have the appeal of noise violation number 49726 at 706 North Washington. Hi, this is Daniel Dixon with the City of Bloomington Legal Department. Um, this is a, an appeal from a garbage ticket uh, by Mr. Ethan Shepard uh, for 706 North Washington Street. And um, if Mr. Shepard or any of the uh, appellants are here tonight, I would defer to them to go first and let them kind of state their case. Um, and then after that, I have um, Rob Council is here and then I have some other things to add. So I'll defer to the appellant if they're here. Yes, I'm here. Okay, um, so on October 20th, I believe, we received a violation for having trash in our outside of our front yard. And this was on the side of our house, not in the actual front yard. And at the beginning of the year, we were issued a blue uh, recycling bin that we did not know was not taken by the city for recycling. And we had filled it up the first week with all the trash and boxes we had to take out. And we contacted Omega asking if anybody would be able to pick up blue bin. And we've tried over five times and about three times a week, a raccoon will jump in and take trash out of there and pull it out into our yard. And on this day, it was at 9.30 in the morning. We hadn't even noticed that the trash was out. And this was actually the second day in a row that it had happened. And we received a $50 fine. And we were just didn't think it was fair because we had been trying to get rid of this blue bin for over two months now. And nobody seems to want to take it. Thank you. Could you just state your name for the record, please? Robert Bender. Thank you. Um, I'll, Adam, I don't know, I'll defer if there's any board questions first before we go on, or I'm happy to have Rob go next. Do we have any questions from the board? I wanted to find out if the um, landlord had contacted you about rectifying the improper garbage um, bin or recycling bin, whatever that bin was. Yes, um, we had a maintenance person come over from the landlord that said that they would take care of it and they have not taken care of it yet. And they asked us to do something about it and we didn't know what to do exactly. So it has been a problem going on for months now. So we'll leave you to go. Thank you. Any other board questions? Ready? Uh, Rob, if you're here, I'd ask that you go ahead and um, unmute. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, can you go ahead and uh, state your name? Uh, hi, I'm Rob Council with the Hand Department. And Rob, what's your capacity with the Hand Department? I am the Neighborhood Compliance Officer. And you're familiar with uh, 706 North Washington Street, is that right? That Yes, sir. Can you go ahead and walk the board through uh, the history with this property, both with this ticket and then any uh, other kind of prior uh, interactions that you've had, warnings or otherwise, for this property? Sure. Um, it's nothing unusual for the neighborhood that I work. It's a college kid neighborhood, a bunch of younger kids living there. Um, these guys, I've issued them a warning, a written warning, a verbal warning, and then at this point, the trash was still in the yard, and so I had to give them a ticket. I uploaded a photo to the Title VI Appeals file, um, and it's the uh, file titled 10 2021, shot by number 207, uh, um, just showing the garbage that's in the yard. Um, this has been an ongoing thing at that residence. There were piles of cardboard in the front yard when I started in August. That got taken care of. Uh, there's, you know, just party remnants in the yard, cans, red cups, and whatnot. 
um, like I said, I've issued them warnings. Uh, and then this one obviously was a ticket because there's just a large pile of trash in the yard. All right, thank you. I don't have any questions for Rob right now. Um, I'll defer to the board. Rob, they do have the uh, city um, trash cart, don't they? Yes, ma'am, they do. Yeah. Uh, judging from the picture, it looks like they've got a couple of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the trash and the recycling. And they're always filled and overflowing also? Yeah, seemingly. I think they've also had issues with the recycling being picked up because of mixed things in the recycling bin, such as pizza boxes and plastic bags. Um, I think that has also led to the issue, but, you know, we want our streets clean in Bloomington. Uh, if I may, I'll just add a comment. This is Adam Wason, Public Works Director. I happened to drive by uh, the area this afternoon looking at a different site um, and just took a look. You know, I, I noticed the, <clears throat> the blue bin is definitely still there. It's still, it's not overflowing onto the ground right now, but it's definitely full to the point that the lid can't be closed. Um, you know, Mr. Bender, I guess my recommendation to you would be that you called Republic Services directly and ask them to come pick up the cart. Um, if you're not getting any feedback from Omega, um, Republic would be able to come and, and pick that up. Um, uh, they do have city trash and recycling services. I, I, they do have those carts as well. Um, and so uh, I guess my just to a point to Mr. Bender would be to call Republic Services or their subsidiary user disposal uh, direct. They come. Yeah, and I would just probably also add like if there's a raccoon coming, probably need to make sure that we don't overfill it so that the lid is open and the raccoon can get in there. Um, because if there is trash, unfortunately, we're going to have to ticket it. Um, yeah. So any other questions from the board or comments? It seems like this they're focusing all this on the, the blue cart that doesn't belong to the city and the raccoon instead of taking care of the... Uh, the city um, trash carts, which seems to be what we're really talking about here. Yeah, I think the issue is that because the because the appellant is using the um, Republic trash cart and it's overflowing and the raccoon is getting to it, it is spewing trash across the neighborhood and that needs to be picked up. Um, and that's the issue. So any other public comment on this item tonight? Okay, do we have a motion? I move that we deny the appeal of NOV number 49726706 North Washington. Nice second. I'll call for a vote. Kyla Cox Deckard? Yes. Beth Hollingsworth? Yes. And Dana Hankey? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, under petitions and remonstrances, this is also an opportunity for any members of the public that might have a comment um, on something not on the agenda tonight. Is there anyone who has a comment on anything not on tonight's agenda? I don't see any reactions or raised hands or chats. I don't either. Okay, thanks. Moving on, Title VI enforcement, uh, abatement at 1600 West 3rd Street. Hi, this is Daniel with the legal department again. Um, this is uh, Chastina's, and I think if she's online, I'll let her go ahead and present this one. Okay, so it is for overgrowth, and I'm asking for a continuous abatement. The property looks really bad, and it's very overgrown, and I have, I have um, issued multiple tickets and no response from the owners. Thank you. Any questions from the board on this item? 
Christina, how soon can this property be abated after uh, this has uh, been given approval? Um, I'm not. I'm not usually the one that issues the abatement part on that, so I would have to talk to Joe. But I'm assuming as soon as she could get it set up. Okay. Sounds like it needs to be taken care of. Any public comment on this item? Do we have a motion? I didn't see any public comment. I only saw Kyla moving her lips. <laughs> I was uh, making a request uh, that was not related to the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I move that we um, approve continuous abatement at 1600 West 3rd Street. And I second. And I'll call for a vote. Kyla Cox Deckard. Yes. Beth Hollingsworth. Yes. Dana Hankey, yes, motion passes. Next up, we have the consent agenda. On the consent agenda, we have the approval of minutes from October 12, 2021, the noise permit for Rose Hill Farm Stop grand opening, resolution 2021-55, canopy of lights, resolution 2021-56, Krampus, resolution 2021-59, the Parks and Recreation Holiday Market, Renew Shared Use Motorized Scooter Agreement with Bird. Resolution 2021-57, the new mobile vendor in the public right of way for the community kitchen of Monroe County. Resolution 2021-58, renew mobile vendor in the public right of way for push carts, push cart sober Joe. The outdoor lighting service agreement with Duke Energy for the intersection of West Third and North Rogers Street. The outdoor lighting service agreement with Duke Energy for East 2nd Street, east of Woodcrest. The outdoor lighting service agreement with Duke Energy for Sherwood Oaks subdivision and approval of payroll. Was there anything that needed to be removed from the consent agenda tonight? I do need to remove um, item number seven, uh, which is resolution 2021-57 um, because I need to recuse myself from that item. Okay. Uh, we can move that under new business. And is it okay to just move that to item number one under new business? Sure is. Do we need a motion for that? Oh, Jackie. No, I don't think so. I think. <clears throat> no, you Go can ahead, Jackie, it, please. I'm sorry. You can, you can remove it. Also, a member of the public can move that so it will move. So that's yeah. okay. So we'll move um, item number seven from the consent agenda to under new business as item number one. Um, any other questions or comments from the board on the consent agenda? Any public comment on the consent agenda? Do we have a motion? I move approval of the consent agenda. Nice second. All in favor? Oops, never mind. I need to call for a vote. <laughs> Kyla Cox Deckard? Yes. Beth Hollingsworth? Yes. Dana Hankey's yes. Motion passes. Next up is new business. And first order of new business is resolution 2021-57, new mobile vendor in the public right of way for community kitchen of Monroe County. Uh, I guess I'll take one. Um, <clears throat> uh, the community kitchen has a new food truck that they'll be using out in the community. Um, as Kyla mentioned, she's a board member for the community kitchen. So we removed this from the consent agenda. Uh, we have all the proper documentation and, um, being a nonprofit, they will be, <clears throat> they won't be subject to the yearly fee for that. So we request your approval for the, uh, mobile vendor and the public right of way via resolution 2021-57. Thank you. Questions from the board? Any public comment on this item? Okay, I'll call for a motion. I move approval of resolution 2021-57, new mobile vendor in public right of way, community kitchen of Monroe County. And I'll call, and I second, and I'll call for a vote. Kyla Cox Deckard. I abstain. Beth Hollingsworth. Yes. Dana Hankey, yes, motion passes. 
Next up is resolution 2021-54 encroachment for 2851 East Longview Avenue. Hey everyone, this is Emily Herr with the engineering department. Skinnell Properties is requesting approval to encroach into the right-of-way with planters, rain gardens, benches, and bicycle racks associated with a new development at 2851 East Longview Avenue. I'm happy to answer any questions, and Tom Jason with Scannell Properties is also on the call. Thank you. Any questions from board members? I think, Emily, we're... Um... Uh, proving this with benches, but that you have not decided on placement of benches at this time. That true? That's correct. Um, benches are included in the event that um, planning decides that they need to be in the right of way. Um, the other option is that benches will be on private property only. Thank you. Any public comment on this item? Hearing and seeing none, do we have a motion? I move approval of resolution 2021-54, encroachment for 2851 East Longview Avenue. And I second. And I'll call for a vote. Kyla Cox Deckard? Yes. Beth Hollingsworth? Yes. And Dana Hankey, yes. Motion passes. Next up, item number two is addendum number two to the LPA consulting contract with Etica Group for the guardrails at various locations throughout the city. All right, moment behind there. Uh, Patrick Durgis, Engineering Department. Uh, this project will replace and upgrade existing guardrail at various locations throughout the city. The, pro the project is programmed in the MPO tip for construction. 190,000 in federal funds. Etica Group is currently under contract for the preliminary engineering services, services. This addendum will add additional right-of-way services required for the guardrail in the Griffey Lake area for the city to obtain land rights from IU to install guardrail along Headley Road. The addendum will add 22,850 to the existing contract mm -hmm of $114,693, making the new contract total $137,543. And in the uh, work session yesterday, uh, I had promised to gain a little bit more information regarding why this uh, right-of-way work was not originally included in the contract. I spoke with Neil Copper, uh, who was uh, with the department at the time when the contract uh, moved forward. He said the thought was uh, right-of-way at all would be avoided on this project. And basically, at, during the, the discovery period, we realized that um, our locations were being limited so much that we wouldn't actually utilize all of the federal funding. And so when we realized that, we looked for critical sites that we could afford to do and obtain the right of way at a reasonable price, or in this case, as a donation. Um, and so this site was selected for that ability or for that reason. Um, it's the most cost-effective way of including the site that would then also use up our federal funding. Um, as, a, as another note to this that I did not mention yesterday, um, I have actually been negotiating a lot regarding this change order because I found the price to be exorbitant. Um, and we're actually about $10,000 less than what was originally proposed um, this area is very remote and there's not a lot of existing benchmarks for the survey. We have to do a location route survey um, that has to tie to existing um, survey benchmarks. And so the survey, while the area is small, they actually have to trace this survey back a long distance that increases the cost. Um, and so while this wasn't included in the original contract, I do not feel that we are paying a premium at this time for adding this into the contract, if that was the, the concern regarding the question. Um, I'm open to any questions if you have them. Thanks for that um, clarification. So when you say that uh, you said something about you were anticipating uh, 30,000 
um, was that, can you just explain to me what that, why you were anticipating that and why this is different? So, uh, Etica does not have the capacity right now to perform the survey. They have their own survey um, crews, but they don't have the capacity right now. So they reached out to uh, another consultant, BLN, and BLN came back uh, with a price of, uh, of twelve thousand dollars for the location route survey, which is what I mentioned is the is the long distance, and uh, and I pushed back stating that that just was. <laughs> I mean, for example, we I think we paid uh, uh, 6900 for the location route survey on the B line, which goes from Adams up Fountain, down Crescent uh, to 17th. And so I, you know, using that and said, this is just seems like a, an obscene cost. And, and so we ended up going with, uh, with uh, BRCJ for the location route survey. Um, and they came in at eight thousand dollars for that, and then all the other fees are uh, are pretty much standard for uh, for right of way um, acquisition and services uh, through an in-doc contract. Something else you had mentioned uh, during the work session was that this actually improves um, a guardrail. Uh, like that there was an existing guardrail in this area. Is that right? And this is replacing that? It's replacing and also extending. Um, the, the current guardrail uh, through maintenance activities on that road, the road elevation has been continuously increased. Uh, typically as a cost savings measure, instead of milling down and removing pavement, you just add on top of it. And so, uh, the old standard guardrail is already shorter than what's required. This guardrail that's out there right now uh, is significantly lower. Um, it is actually, uh, it could potentially cause more of a hazard than a benefit if a car was to leave the road. Um, the, the guardrail also has a, what's called a turn down when the guardrail um, terminates into the ground. And uh, and the turndown is right at the edge of the road. And that has been actually shown through a lot of testing that uh, the turndown actually results more as a ramp to a vehicle if they hit it. So we're extending the guardrail further south to, uh, to be able to get into a tangent section of the road, which would allow us to uh, install a, uh, an end terminal, which is a crash rated end terminal. So if a vehicle did hit the end instead of actually becoming launched by this turndown, it actually uh, creates a crumple zone where it has a, a sacrificial piece of metal that will crumple as a car hits it that will lessen the impact and, uh, and also not launch the car into the air. The only comment I would add is that <clears throat> I appreciate that Patrick's trying not to launch cars into the air. Thank you. Excellent. Any other questions from the board? Any public comment on this item? <clears throat> okay, seeing and hearing none. Do we have a motion? I move that we approve addendum number two to LPA consulting contract with Etica Group for guardrails at various locations throughout the city. And I second. And I'll call for a vote. Kyla Cox Deckard? Yes. Beth Hollingsworth? Yes. And Dana Hankey, yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Next is lane closure request for 1800 North Walnut Street from Centerpoint Energy. Hi, yes, um, Mike Stewart here with the engineering department. Centerpoint Energy is requesting the easternmost lane of North Walnut at approximately 1800 North Walnut, the former Motel 6 site. Uh, they're requesting this from basically as soon as it could be approved through December 1st. The work will be to both lower an existing natural gas pipeline and add existing gas service to the new construction going on there. Uh, 
to accomplish this work, as I mentioned, they will need to close the lane. This will provide a safety buffer for any of the workers who are out there. Um, as you can see in the uh, maintenance of traffic plan that was in the packet, uh, they will have an arrow board out there. Uh, they also have mentioned, in addition to what's in the MOT, they will be kind of mirroring the sign or signage on the western side of the road as well, just so uh, there's a little bit more visibility for anybody who is driving down North Walnut. Uh, there's a chance that this closure will not go through December or into December, uh, but they understand that there is a lot of rock in the area, so they have kind of built in that buffer, understanding they may hit delays. Uh, we have asked and they've agreed to uh, not have the lane closure on November 19th, which is the Friday that IU gets out of uh, when, they're, when they go onto the Thanksgiving break. So just trying to anticipate any of those heavy traffic days where we don't necessarily want a lane closure on North Walnut. Uh, there are sections of the sidewalk that will be closed down that are not currently closed down. And to kind of accommodate this, there will be a flagger on site who will be able to stop traffic on North Walnut to allow for uh, pedestrians to cross if they basically need to access the other side of the road. Uh, and I think that's what I have. I think Dave Hudson is here from Miller Pipeline. Uh, and I also can answer any questions. Thank you. And you had mentioned that they were going to stop work. At, is it at five every day? Yes, thank you. Uh, the lane will open up every night and as well on the weekends. They won't be working on the weekends. So we'll still have Saturday and Sunday full open. And then at nighttime, everything should be open. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions from the board? I was just going to reiterate uh, what we had discussed in the work session yesterday, the fact that um, the surrounding property owners will still have access to their, um, you know, lots or entryways um, and that that shouldn't be an issue on this project. And also that the board's um, uh, notifying people of the, of the change in lanes is going to go up immediately as soon as they start the work tomorrow or whenever. Yeah, uh, I won't issue the permit until I have a signed permit from the board, and I think they're agreeable to that. So uh, I don't think tomorrow will necessarily be the start date. Okay. But. Any public comment on this item? All right, do we have a motion? I move approval of lane closure request for 1800 North Walnut Street from Center Point Energy. And I second. I'll call for a vote. Kyler Fox Deckard. Yes. Beth Hollingsworth. Yes. Dana Hankey. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Let's see. Item number four under new business change order number one for the Lower Cascades Road Project with ENV Paving. Yep, Adam Wason, Public Works Director, on behalf of Joe Van Dievender, our Street Superintendent. Um, this is a six thousand plus dollar change order to um, <clears throat> extend uh, about three hundred. I think it's three hundred feet south on um, Old State Road thirty seven slash Cascade Lower Cascades Drive. Um, <clears throat> basically, there was just from where the project was scheduled to start and stop there. There was about a 300 foot gap in um, some older pavement that made no sense to leave there. So this is just to um, run that to where the concrete road starts uh, 300 feet to the south of where we originally planned. Thank you. Questions from the board. When do you anticipate, Adam, that this uh, project will be completed and be? Uh, it was supposed the striping was supposed to be complete this afternoon. I think the okay. contractor had some truck problems, so um, we should have the road back open by the end of the week. Okay, because I think it's still clear tomorrow, and then rain's predicted for Thursday and Friday. Yeah, um, as long as the striper was able to get in town, um, Parks is also needing to keep it closed for part of the day tomorrow to get a crane in place for the project they have ongoing inside of Cascades Lower Cascades Park. Okay.
Any public comment on this item? I don't see anything. Thank you. Do we have a motion? Move approval of change order number one for Lower Cascades Road Project with E&B paving. And I second. And I call for a vote. Kyla Cox Deckard. Yes. Beth Hollingsworth. Yes. Dana Hankey. Yes. Motion passes. Next up is item number five, contract with Groomer Construction for the trench drain at the Sanitation Department. Yep. Uh, again, Adam Wason, Public Works Director. I'm going to start with a quick note uh, for Kel McBride. Kel, um, all things Krampus were approved as part of the consent agenda, so you don't need to stay on the, uh, on the meeting if you don't want. Uh, but this is a request for approval of awarding a contract to Groomer Construction for $44,000. $44,860 um, to replace a 150 foot trench drain uh, in the sanitation garage. Basically, we've got a drain that runs down the middle of the sanitation garage that captures the water uh, from things like washing the trucks, et cetera. And um, so this is to replace that. Uh, there's a damaged section that definitely needs replaced. So this would uh, repair that and allow for those large trash trucks to um, Continue to use the facility. So this would be for $44,860 to groomer construction. Thank you. Questions from the board? Adam, did JD say those trucks could weigh 70,000 pounds? I'm uh, fully loaded and everything else. I think that's a prop. Yes, yeah, possibly up to that much. Wow. <laughs> I was amazed. So it shows how much I know about truck weight. <laughs> That's why they don't let us drive those trucks. Yeah. That's why they don't let me drive those trucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Any uh, public comment on this item? I don't see any. Google tells me that up to, they can weigh up to 80,000 pounds, Beth. Whoa. Oh, you. we got 10 more to go. I didn't know that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, do we have a motion? Move that we approve contract with Groomer Construction for trench drain at Sanitation Department. And I second. And I call for a vote. Kyla Cox Decker. Yes. Beth Hollingsworth. Yes. And Dana Hankey. Yes. Motion passes. Next up is staff reports and other business. Uh, Adam Wason again, Public Works Director. Um, uh, staff report for this evening, just condolences to another staff member at the Public Works Department. Um, Want to send our thoughts and prayers to Ryan Hillenberg and the Fleet Maintenance Division who tragically lost a son this weekend. Um, we're all thinking about you, Ryan, and holding you up uh, during these tough times. So uh, we'll keep, keep you in our thoughts, bud. Thanks. Thanks, Adam. Um, okay, next up is approval of claims. I had a question just out of interest. The downtown bollard covers, I was just interested in what those are since I think- So um, we've had a problem recently where someone has been removing the green um, so it, on Kirkwood and in some other downtown locations around the curb, uh, the turns of the curbs, um, sometimes we put up um, uh, bollards just to protect the planters and things. And these are just the vertical bollards. Um, they're, um, so we had a rash of them disappearing. So these are just the plastic sleeve covers that go on top of the um, cement filled bollard. Okay. Thank you. I was wondering, because mm -hmm. I know that some of those bollards are new. Yeah, these are not These are the ones that are actually um, in the turn radius of the curb line on Kirkwood. So not the, not the bollards that we use to close the street. These are actually on the curb lines. They're mostly meant to protect the nice limestone planters from getting hit. Got it. Okay. Thank you. I had a question. Mm -hmm. this more just of interest, the uh, department CFRD uh, count 7,000 
Aunt Bertha, a public benefit corporation. Do you know what that is? Yes. So this is a, um, yes, they offer training. Um, and I actually just did one yesterday, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion training. Uh, and so this is part of a subscription service with them. Okay. Thank you. Also, I wanted to ask you about um, the closing of Kirkwood. Are they going to be uh, closed again this coming weekend, and then that ends that for this? Yeah, season? well, um, uh, Kirkwood will be closed through Sunday, and then throughout the day Monday, we'll get it back opened up. Um, we were hopeful that most of the restaurants would get their stuff moved on Sunday, but it sounds like some of them will be more in the morning on, on Monday. I think it's been really, really great for the city, for the restaurants and the businesses along there. It's been a nice, I agree. nice thing. Thank you. Okay, any other questions on plans tonight? Any public comment on plans? See any? Okay, do we have a motion? I move that we approve claim $626,253.09. And I second. And I call for a vote. Kyla Cox Deckard? Yes. Beth Hollingsworth? Yes. Dana Hankey? Yes. Motion passes. And there's nothing else, so I will call for adjournment. Happy Halloween, everyone. In two Happy weeks. Halloween. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you.